Black holes are one of the more elusive objects to astronomers. You can't see them because they absorb light, and I dare you to get close enough to touch one of these things. Just a few decades ago, most regarded these mysterious objects as a work of science fiction, similar to portals and time travel. In this episode of The Space Age, we'll be taking a look at black holes and how they break the fabric of our very universe. All black holes form by an object somehow being compressed smaller than its Schwarzschild radius. The Schwarzschild radius, named after a German physicist called Schwarzschild, is essentially the radius that you would need to compress an object of a certain mass so that the escape velocity equals the speed of light, thus forming a black hole. For example, you would need to squeeze an object with the mass of the Earth to the size of about 2.5 centimeters or one US penny in order to form a black hole. But hold on, if gravity is related to mass, then how is shrinking an object while keeping its mass the same going to do anything? To answer this, let's take a look at the sun and the earth. Now shrink the sun down while keeping its mass. This allows the earth to get a lot closer to the sun's center of mass, increasing gravitational influence, while the mass of the sun never changed. Even if the earth of the larger sun was somehow able to go inside the sun, the force of gravity would start to cancel out as there is now mass behind the earth. This makes the gravity on the surface of the smaller sun much higher than the larger therefore increasing the escape velocity, or speed, needed to escape the grasp of an object's gravity from that object's surface. To form a black hole, the escape velocity needs to be greater than the speed of light, so that not even light can escape, and why a black hole is black. But now hold on. Light doesn't have any mass. Sure, the emitter might have mass, but light is made up of photons, a massless particle, Therefore, gravity shouldn't affect it, right? Well, actually, gravity warps spacetime. To get a better understanding of this, if I were to put an object with mass on my bed, take this stone grinder, it'll warp the bed in a similar way to an object with gravity warps spacetime. If I were to then take this rubber ball and place it next to the grinder, giving it no force, it'll fall into it, similar to how gravity works in space. However, if I give this ball some momentum, does this look familiar anyone? Depending on how smooth your bed is, you might get better results. Well anyways, back to light. Light follows the path of space-time and moves with it. So if I were to shoot a light beam next to the sun, for example, it would slightly change direction as it travels across the warped space-time. We call this phenomenon gravitational lensing, and the more gravity, the more extreme the lensing. Take this model showing a planet, a star, and a black hole. Let's pretend that we are standing on the planet and have our telescopes pointed in this direction. Now in a normal situation, we wouldn't be able to see the star since it's behind us. However, thanks to the black hole's extreme gravitational lensing effect, we would be able to see the star as if it was right in front of us. Let's see what happens if we move the star. However, if you thought that phenomenon was weird, then you haven't seen anything yet. Warping the fabric of space also warps time. That's why we call it space-time. First, you need to understand that time shifts in a similar way to the speed of light. Now, light moves at a constant speed, but as we learned before, the space-time that it moves on can be distorted. Therefore, time can be warped. Take the Earth. Its small gravitational influence actually bends space-time, making light take slightly longer to travel through it than it would across flat space-time. Time behaving similar to light is also slower on Earth than it is on the ISS, for example, where the distortion from Earth's gravity is more minor. We call this gravitational time dilation, and this isn't science fiction either. Super accurate atomic clocks fall slightly out of sync on satellites, but because Earth's gravity is so weak, even after centuries, the difference is just going to be fractions of seconds. I think you can see where this is going. In the space around black holes, time dilation is far more noticeable. 
To see exactly how, let's send a robot probe that's durable enough to withstand the gravitational might of a black hole. We will be watching it from my space station much farther away from the black hole. Pay close attention to the rotating rings to help give you a sense of time. From our perspective, the closer the probe travels to the black hole, the slower it becomes. And from its perspective, my space station will be rotating faster and faster. As the probe gets closer and closer, the light traveling from the probe to us loses all of its energy as it tries to escape the black hole and gets stretched into the infrared wavelengths. For the probe, all the light in the universe gets supercharged into the gamma ray spectrum. If we ignore the light's change in energy so we can actually see what's happening, then the gravitational time dilation keeps on getting more and more extreme until the probe reaches the event horizon or edge of a black hole. After this point, space-time gets warped into an infinite hole that you can't escape from. Time also stops dead at this point. When the probe reaches it, from our perspective, it'll look as if the probe is frozen at the edge of the black hole, stuck forever. But from the probe's perspective, time would theoretically keep on going. This weird kind of paradox is why no one knows what happens after you reach the event horizon. No one yet, at least. Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did, say so in the comments so I can thank you. And make sure to check out my other video on the solar system. See ya.